All right, welcome back to another video by Firestarter Graphics and Engineering. Today we're going to talk about using Prusa Slicer, the newest version 2.0, with the TiVo Tornado. I've had a lot of people ask me how to do this. They've wanted to learn how to use this software. It's a great slicer. It's probably my favorite. Um, I think it's just as good as a paid version of some of the more expensive slicers out there that you have to pay for I think it's just as good or even better because there's quite a few things that you can do with it so when you first download it and install it I'm running on Windows 10 it's gonna open up and look just like this it's gonna have your platter and it's gonna ask if you want to run the configuration wizard now if you accidentally close that configuration wizard let me show you how to get there it's really easy click on configuration configuration wizard Yes, I'm going to discard because, okay. That error was coming up because I've been in Prusa Slicer this morning just making some basic edits. Anyway, so this is what Configuration Wizard looks like. You can hit Next. It's going to ask you which printer. We're none of these because we're the TiVo Tornado. And it's going to say Define Custom Printer. So you're going to call it TiVo Tornado or whatever you want. So then you're going to hit Next. And it's going to ask for your firmware type. Marlin, your bed shape, 300 by 300, but where's our Z height? We don't have that yet, so I'm going to show you where to put that after this section, okay? This, just keep normal. Temperatures, 200, and I print at 60. I live in a dry area, so this seems to work really well for me. And then hit next, and I just leave these on. Then you hit finish. Okay, so once it's done with that, it's just going to load this up. So we need to change our printer height because we've only added the bed and 300 by 300. So let's click on printer settings, go to general, and notice it says bed shape max print height. Okay, if you click set, this is what's going to bring up for your bed. Remember, rectangular 300 by 300. Max print height, 400. That's what ours prints at. Okay, that's great. Now you'll notice this is yellow. These are red. And you're trying to wonder what all the different colors are. Look up here. Anything in red is expert. So I always keep... These are clickable, by the way. So if I click on simple, it's all... It gets rid of a lot of all these other options underneath here. But I always keep it at expert. So I can do what I need to do. So, but I never touch any of these expert settings ever. Okay, so that's the general. All right, let's talk about the custom G code. This is what you're gonna want right before it starts printing. This is kind of its preparatory state. So G28 is what I have for my um, beginning G code, which is home all axes. Then for my NG code, this is what I have. You can pause the video and go through it. You don't have to write these comments, but it is nice. So, yeah, so these two right here are the ones I like the best. What it does is it moves the Z up a bit when it's done printing, retracts the filament, and then moves the print head 300 millimeters in the X direction, and then moves the print bed to its center mark. And then I wish this worked, but it doesn't. So, anyway, then let's go to extruder 1, so nozzle diameter 0.4, I left this at default, the only thing I changed here is retraction length to 6.8, and the z-hop to 0.2, so z-hop is, if it's printing and you have supports, sometimes the nozzle hits the supports, knocks them over, so each time it needs to move somewhere, it's going to lift that nozzle 0.2 millimeters. I didn't touch anything else. Retra oh wait, yes I did. Retraction speed I set to 40 and minimum travel after retractions I left at default value. What's the default speed here? Huh, 40. So I guess I didn't touch it. So anyway, that's that. Okay, filament settings. The only thing I changed was my extrusion multiplier to 0.98. That works really well for me. Uh, just left this the way it was. Cooling, enable auto cooling. I always leave that one. I just want the program to decide how it's going to cool. 
So first layer prints, the fan's not on, but anything after that, the fan's on. Advanced, filament type PLA, T touched nothing on here. Um, custom G code, I did nothing to. So print settings, this is where all the magic happens. Okay, so right now we're underneath support material, but let's start at the top. Layers and parameters. So we have layer height, first layer height, parameters, um, spiral vase. I didn't touch this. You can read what it tells you what it does. You can read it. Solid layers, top and bottom, I do three. Um, I left these at default values. Seam position, aligned. I always print inside out, so I leave this one unchecked. Now for my layer height, I'm going to talk about these numbers for a minute. The stock stepper motors in a TiVo Tornado do a full step every 1.8 degrees. So if there's 360 degrees in a full revolution, divide that by 1.8, you get 200. So what does that mean? That means, um, let's see, 360 revolutions, 1.8 degrees per step. So it's 200 steps for a full 360 degree revolution of a stepper motor. So, okay, that number doesn't really do much for us, but if we think about our lead screw and our height is something to do with the Z axis, our lead screw is an eight millimeter lead screw. That means for one full rotation, it lifts that Z axis eight millimeters. So do eight divided by 200, and it tells us for every full step of that stepper motor, it lifts it 0 0.04 millimeters. So, um, so every 1.8 degrees of that stepper motor moving lifts it 0 0.04 degrees. Every 200 steps, which is a full rotation for it, lifts it 8 millimeters high, if that makes sense. Anyways, so that just means with the 0 0.04, you want to do your layer steps in steps of 0 0.04 millimeters high. So 0 0.2, 0 0.24, 0 0.28, 0 0.32, 0.16. Because if you don't do that, you're going to run into what they call a half step, and a half step reduces the amount of torque by about 25%, which will cause binding and cause Z banding, and your layers will be uneven. This was a huge process in getting very smooth layers, and if we go down to speed, I print at 75 millimeters a second, and I get really smooth layers. So. I highly suggest printing in steps of 0 0.04 millimeters. Okay, so parameters too, but you can change it to what you want. Infill, I'm sure you guys are all familiar with how to use this. So pick and choose what you want. I didn't touch anything in along here, but you can if you want. Skirt and brim, I always print a skirt, that's how I clean my nozzle. I used to have a custom G code for cleaning the nozzle, but I don't have that anymore. I will add it soon, but for now, for large objects, I just do three loops. I do a distance of six, mill six millimeters um, offset from the object, one layer height. That way I can make sure my nozzle is primed. Support material. Um, this is where you can do auto-generated supports, but I'm going to show you how to do that a different way. So generate support material, I always have that checked. I leave this one unchecked because under platter, Right here, you can change everywhere, which will automatically go back and recheck it. So it's kind of redundant, but it's nice. So speed, 75 millimeters per second. You can look over everything else I've done, adjust according to you for your needs. I touched nothing in the red. So multiple extruders, we don't need. Advanced, the only thing I changed here were these two values. I changed it to 0.4 to match my nozzle, 0.42. Everything else I just left the same, and I haven't noticed any difference. So, output options, nothing. Notes, nothing. Dependencies, nothing. Okay, so that is everything for the print settings. Go ahead and mess how you want, but that's those are the settings that work the best for me.
and I've set up a couple of other TiVo tornadoes and it works great with them as well. So let's talk about the platter, let's talk about slicing. This is where the fun happens. So just like every other slicer, this one is drag and drop. So I'm just going to take this gear house that I made and drag and drop it. So if you want to rotate, there's two ways we can rotate this object. If My preferred method is place on face. You click it, and just click on a face, and it will place it there. If you don't want to do that and you want to use the rotation tool, so left mouse button rotates camera outside of any type of tool, right mouse button pans it. But if you want to rotate your actual object, grab this little gizmo handle is what they call them. Okay, notice where my mouse cursor is. It's on the outside of all those tick marks. That means I am free to rotate where I want. But if I move my mouse button inside, every 15 degrees, it'll lock. Okay? To the smaller ones, it's every 5 degrees. So... That's it's a little interesting, but it works. You can also rotate right here on the right hand side. You can also change your scale factor right here. Okay, so let's talk about supports real quick. So, right now we have supports everywhere. So let's just slice it and see what this looks like. Okay, so as we expected, where we'd, the algorithm picks where it thinks it wants supports. Um, notice I have multi colors on. This is green, this is blue. What does this all mean? Well, if we look right here, it says speed, millimeters per second. So the blue is going to be printed at 15 millimeters per second. Yours may not look like this. Why? So if you go down to view, click this arrow, the default is feature type, which tells you these things right here. I always like to set mine on speed. That way I can see what's going on. Okay, so let's just go through everything looks good you'll notice that this is rectilinear this is instead of that zigzag rectilinear I put rectilinear grid I'll show you how to change that print settings support material rectilinear grid right here the reason why I choose that is because when you're printing things such as this flange right here not flan like a dessert but this flange if you just use the regular zigzag it'll print a little um, less detail right here doesn't look so good so with rectilinear grid it can print higher detail right there if you ever move your model and you don't like it just hit A to auto arrange it okay. so let's say we want to get rid of the material that support material is right here just because we want to I want to right click and it will show add support blocker enforcer modifier or part if it does not show any of these Make sure expert is clicked. So, we're going to do a support blocker. Okay? Now remember, supports are set to everywhere right now. So, our shape, I'm just going to set a box. Where did I place my box? Right over here. So, I'm going to put my box right here. And I'm going to scale my box up. And then I'm going to move it because I'm going to block that whole section of support from building. There it is. See, you can see my little skirt right here. goes around. That's how I clean my nozzle. But notice, there's no supports right there. I've completely blocked them out. That comes in really handy. But for the most part, I always usually do support enforcers. Blockers come in handy. Um... You just have to kind of be intuitive and know what you're looking for. So if I want to generate my own supports, I'm going to go for support enforcers only. Okay, so I'm going to right click, add support enforcer, and I'm going to make a box. Now the box, here's what's interesting with enforcers. They don't have to be as big as the the actual blocker. So let's move this up right there. Let's move this down. You can just have it sitting right here. 
just like that. Okay, now notice the enforcers are blue when we unclick and blockers are red. So that's how you're going to color code it. Enforcers are blue, blockers are red. So let's reslice. And notice we've generated our own support material right there. Pretty nice, huh? Okay. One last thing before I show you. Let's go down to here. Notice how this material has 10% infill all the way across. And if I were to, and it's really thin right here, and if I were to put nuts and bolts in here, this would break really fast. But we can modify that to be 100% infill. Okay, I'm going to show you how to do that. So go back, click this button for editor view. We can leave that little support enforcer, but we're going to click on our object again, right click, add modifier, and we're going to make a box. You can make a slab, but the slab is huge. So let's just make our own slab. Okay, I'm going to move it into position. Right like that. Let's move it down. Okay, let's move it right there. Right into there. Unclick it. And now modifier meshes are green. Blockers are red. Enforcers are blue. Okay, so come over here where it says generic box. If you can't figure out which one it is, if you click on it, it'll highlight it. Right click on this setting. Go to infill, fill density 100%. I'm going to switch it to triangles. Okay, there's a lot of other options you can choose. Uh, go through those yourself. Remember, this is just a basic thing. Sorry, that was my birds, they're waking up, they're probably freaking out about something. Okay, so let's scroll down, let's scroll down, and see what happens. Okay. 100% infill with triangles right here. Now notice it didn't bring it out to here. We can, well maybe, let's move it down. Oh it did, okay. Just needed to move the layer button down. So anyways, 100% infill works great. So if you want it on this other side, you can copy this, control C and then control V or Victor and be able to paste it and have both sides strong. So that is a couple of cool options you can do. One last option. If something's either too big, you can actually cut it. You can move this cutting plane where you want. Hit perform cut. Um, it's gonna mess up. Not mess up, sorry. Hit A. Remove this little, there we go. Now when you slice it, Support and force it. Yep, there they are. So, might have to rem you might have to move around your modifier meshes and your support thingies, but you can cut things. It's actually really cool. So, anyways, that is a basic rundown of how to use Prusa Slicer for the TiVo Tornado. I hope you enjoyed, and thanks for watching.